What are we discussing on today's podcast? Well, it's crossover time with Locked On Padres host Javier Reyes to discuss Shohei Otani's injury, how does it affect his free agent market, and then drafting the best home run celebrations, all on today's Locked On Diamondbacks crossover. You are Locked On Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, without further ado, as we do every week, one of our podcast guests for a little crossover action, we got Javier Reyes of Locked On Padres. What's up, man? What's up? How you doing? What's up, man? Another week, another crossover, another draft. As always, we got the NL wild card heating up. It's the final stretch of the baseball season. How are we feeling right now? Um, pretty good because, dude, I missed you last week. I think we yeah. didn't we didn't manage to do it last week, and I no. missed it. And I love doing these, but yeah, man. I mean, it's fu- like I had like one only one person like messaged me the other day. Um. As well as just my mom asking me, like, how is it hard? Like, with the Padres being such a mess and, like, looking unlikely to make the postseason. It's like, I, I think you just kind of have to appreciate small things. Like, I, I really love watching Hassan Kim. I'm mm-hmm. hoping that Tatis does well, even if we don't win, because I just want to shut people up. And they're this weird, like, obsession people have lately with, like, wanting him to be bad and making fun of him because whatever. I mean, a bunch of reasons we don't have to get into, but... <laughs> Yeah, man, just just hanging in there. Um, and I can't lie to you. There still are. A, I have like split second feelings every now and then where I'm like, we're back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like what? Uh, like, uh, I don't know if you saw Hassan Kim hit a grand slam this week mm-hmm. and they beat the Marlins in that game. I had like a, I'm going to say 10 seconds, 10 seconds. I'll say 10 seconds. I was like, we're back. <laughs> like, we're just, back we're, in it. Yeah. And then they got shut out the very next day by a pitcher who had been giving up like 10 runs a start for the last four starts. So, hey, that's that's just the season, though. Yeah, because even though they haven't been great, they've just been close enough in those standings where it's like four and a half games here, five mm-hmm. games there, where we're like, you know what? We put together two and a half weeks, you know, a 15-game stretch of really good baseball where we go like 11 and four, 12 and three, and you never mm-hmm. know. And, you know, if there's still 33 games left or whatever, hobby baseball, you never know what could happen in the rest of the season here uh, with the San Diego Padres. I wouldn't bet on it, but you never know. Um, Because yeah. like we just saw with the, uh, you know, the L.A. Angels, their superstar Shohei Otani, who is an impending free agent, has a little tear in his UCL. Already underwent Tommy John surgery back in 2018. It looks like he's going to do the Bryce Harper route, where Bryce Harper mm-hmm. we just saw this past yep. year, um, mm-hmm. last year had that elbow injury. He needed Tommy John in the off season, but he was still able manage just to DH the rest of the season. Of course, Bryce Harper carried that Phillies offense to the World Series. So even though Otani is not going to be pitching, he can still be the best most impactful position player in Major League Baseball. But how do you think this injury now affects his free agent market? Do you still think a team's going to go out there and give him, you know, the 10-year, $600 million? Do you think maybe Otani's like, you know what? Let me take a short-term deal and come back to the Angels and rehab and then hit the market in a couple years. What do you think happens now? You know, it's it's interesting because we've had, like, a couple of players have these, like, interesting contract decisions the past couple years recently i'm plugging my team like with michael waka with this it's like a mutual option but then becomes a player i don't have time to get into it all because in fact <laughs> i don't have all the details right in front of me but it's like this really weird deal that if he pitches a certain amount of innings it becomes player and then something becomes mutual it's whatever but it, it, it's more complicated and then you have carlos correa opting for the one year thing like maybe maybe we might be heading for a, a little bit of the, the julio rodriguez contract is a great example, and I think the most relevant to this discussion because Julio Rodriguez's contract is is chunky. He's getting paid, but it, it can get really crazy depending on like milestones and how well he plays and the games and if he wins MVPs and stuff like that. Um, that was baked into the contract, so I think we might see something similar. I think, unfortunately, this very much cost him a lot of guaranteed money. Uh, there's no way around that. It stinks. It now is not going to be that 600 million or whatever that people were, were thinking he was going to get. I think what's going to happen is he'll make like, you know, whatever Carlos Correa was going to get like around that. Um, I just say what Carlos Correa was going to get um, 
with the Giants and Mets, like maybe like that 300 type of deal just as a batter because his bat has been amazing this year. Yeah, uh, maybe I, like, I guess he just saw that Aaron Judge, that that was what it took to take away the MVP from him. So he's like, I'll just do that. Um, <laughs> that's apparently what he did. So I think he'll get paid that. And then there's going to be all these incentives. And I think it actually makes sense for both parties, whichever team ends up signing him, be like, all right, this contract will get crazy, but for good reason. Because it'll be like, oh, because he's now doing both things for us. So I think that's what's going to happen is there's going to be so many incentives. I think we're going to get one of the more creative, unique contracts we've seen in a long time where it's it's 280 million, something like that, whatever. And for a long time. And then it's like if he pitches 100 innings, it goes up by 100 million. And if it, he does it again, then it goes up by a lot. So I think that's what's going to happen. And I, I pretty much would guarantee that because I don't know like if the agent for Otani isn't trying to take into account like the pitching. He's like, we're not going to settle for you almost taking advantage of him being hurt Mm -hmm. to try and just paying him as a hitter. When we all know if he gets healthy and everything, you're going to want to use him as a pitcher. So I think that's, what's going to happen. And uh, I think it'll be, it's still going to be awesome seeing where he ends up going this off season. Well, yeah. Well, because of that last point you made, I wonder now if all the options are now on the table for Otani this offseason. And maybe this is actually the best case scenario for the Los Angeles Angels, at least keeping Otani for the short term. Because I wouldn't honestly even be surprised. I think we've seen this in the past with some other athletes and maybe not just in baseball, but across sports where it's like, your free agency is coming up. You're a guy who is one of the top players on the market. But because you get hurt right before your free agency, sometimes you just take that one or two year deal to go back to your team, rehab for a season, maybe play a little bit so you could re up your value. And then you get free agency once again and get the contract that you always deserve. I think for Otani now, because of this, he could come back to the Angels and miss all of next season. Mm-hmm. Rehab from Tommy John. Maybe he signs a two year deal this offseason with like a player option or a team option in that second half or, excuse me, in that second year. He comes back that second year. He shows everyone he's healthy. He balls, and now Otani at age 31 hits the open market again. And now with, you know, probably inflation in two Mm -hmm. years is going to be even higher. Otani's looking at a $700 million contract over a nine-year period. So I actually think for the Angels, this could work out for the short term that Otani comes back. And you know what else? If he does come back just for rehab, just take that short-term deal to hit the free agency in two years, maybe now you can actually build that team instead of doing all these desperate moves where you call up your first-round pick in this past year's draft to play immediately and you're trading you know i mean i wasn't mad at the trade deadline deals but now you don't have to be desperate where you make every decision in the prism of otani's leaving three months now you're like okay otani might leave in 24 months and now we have a little bit longer of a runway to finally build Mm -hmm. something sustainable and maybe that actually is a better um proposal to otani to stay long term than what you're currently doing yeah i mean maybe but I, I mean, and apologies to the Locked On Angels boys, the Halo Bros. They Halo do an amazing shop, uh, shop, uh, job over there. <laughs> awesome stuff. And I agree with them. They've been roasting Ben Verlander today on the timeline, rightfully so. But um, I, uh, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't want him to leave. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just think it's. Leave. I think, though, it would be unfortunate, and this is where my bias comes in, if he went to the Dodgers, because it would be like, all right, here they go for four out of the last five off seasons, just getting the top free agent, whatever. Um, But I think it would be better than him staying with the Angels, because I don't think they know what they're doing, man. And to be honest with you, I think they should have traded him. I think they should have traded Trout years ago, because what you could get, you could get a clean slate, you could get prospects, and... I, I don't know. I just think that it would have been really great for them to be like, let's let's just turn this around because it's not working for whatever reason. Like they just can't find a way despite having all these guys. It's going to be mentioned in an ESPN documentary yeah, years from now that they had two uh, it, people pro- are probably going to be like, these are two top 30 players of all time. Yeah. Like just in general, top 30. And what, maybe um, the top two since like 2000, you can argue. Maybe. Yeah. Like, and, and if, since 2000, like the, some of the best of the generation, absent yeah. your A rods and bonds and players like that. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I feel for the Angels fans. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to pull Stephen A. Smith where he's like, nobody yeah, cares Lonzo. about you. Uh, yeah. The, when the Stephen A. versus Lonzo ball where it's like, you can't oh. sit down, bro. <laughs> like that. No, not that part. That's a whole <laughs> other thing. We got to talk about that offline. But, um, No, just the whole like, hey, Angels fans, nobody cares about you. I don't like doing that. That's such a boring thing. Why should 
media relevance and popularity to determine like what's what a player should do all the time and oh since not everybody cares that means you as a reporter shouldn't care i just have an issue with that um you know i know Stephen a is a little bit more of a personality now but you get my point uh so i don't necessarily like that but i have to admit like i just i just wanted to make the playoffs and i i personally feel like it's not going to happen with the angels so yeah uh, anywhere heck i hate the yankees but like could you imagine that that would be pretty wild to watch i mean pretty well mets Mariners would be fun. Yeah. You know, Padres would be fun. A little D-backs action. Hey. You know, why, why not? Hey. I don't know. Why not? Otani has to get to a big market. And why not a place where it's sunny 365 days a year? You look at the winter time. There is no winter time. Christmas, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. you're outside in shorts and the swimming pool. Why not come to Arizona and join the <laughs> dogs out here? Show Otani. If you want to do that, we'll make you very rich. It will make you very happy. Coming up, we're going to be drafting the best home run celebrations in all of baseball. But first, let me talk to our listeners about this incredible new app. Well, it's not very new. It's been around for a while. I actually use it every single season for the fantasy football season. And it's called Sleeper because actually in my fantasy football league, it's, you know, fancy the fancy football season is right around the corner and my dynasty league on the sleeper app actually made a trade today traded away calvin ridley and acquired Ooh. jonathan taylor so two kind of wild cards right now in football and i am desperate on running back so i am very happy to see okay. jp and the sleeper app is great hobby not just because you could play your fancy sports on there but you can also mm-hmm. do daily fantasy and make some money because if you think corbin carroll and show tani are going to hit home runs you pick those two players, you can win up to a hundred times your money. You just pick players with some stat categories, you get your picks right, and you can win big. So please go to Sleeper, use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over thirty states. Check out Sleeper today. And don't forget to catch every D backs and Padres pitch on their hometown broadcast when you download the Series XM app and search up either Diamondbacks or Padres. Now let's get back into the Locked on Diamondbacks crossover with Locked on Padres, and let's draft the best home run celebrations because admittedly, I'm not going to lie to you, Javi, a lot of these were kind of new to me, and I'm like, how have I not seen all these fun home run celebrations? Is it because I'm not following these Mm -hmm. teams on social media? I do not know why, but when you talk about baseball and exposure and bring the fun and excitement i'm like oh my god these home run celebrations are incredible but yet how have i gone 25 years of my life you know 20 of those probably watching baseball and i'm not seeing like half of these home run celebrations very ominous to me but let's mm-hmm. where's my uh trusty old quarter at that's always the worst part of this podcast i never know wow i actually sit next to a thing of quarters and nickels and dimes right here on my desk who knew mm. Let's see. I have a game token here. We'll say the side that says the name of the bar is the head side. So as always, I'm assuming you're saying heads, Javi. So this is heads right here. It says level one. Let's flip it. Hold on. Hold on. I always oh. do tails. I always do tails. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're a tails man. So the, the, the one man. that says level one is for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> level one. All right. Heads. I mean, Millard goes first. Funny how the gods do that. <laughs> You've won like every coin toss. <laughs> oh funny, my god. Funny how the gods lay it down. <laughs> so going number one in this little draft of home run celebrations, there's a lot of wacky ones in here. Some of these, a lot of these involve props or wearing something. Um, mm. and I think for number one, I'm going to go with a team. That's not the best team in Major League Baseball. I don't know how many people are watching them this season. They're not having the greatest season after starting the year. If you remember that first month of the season, this was one of the best teams in Major League Baseball. Our guy Ethan Smith in the locked on chat mm. was pounding the table. This team mm-hmm. is back. O'Neill Cruz. I do, I can't name another player on that roster. Andrew McCutcheon. <laughs> Look at my squad. Unfortunately, the Pirates have slowed down, but you know what's still fun with the Pirates? Those home run celebrations because at number one overall, I'm taking those little prop swords. I'm a guy who quietly and admittedly, I do have a little black belt in my background, so I do a little sword work in my free time. I got the katana in my jersey crib, so I love a little sword action, so I'm going to have to go with the Pittsburgh Pirates and their little sword buckling, sword, little mastership celebration. 
Firstly, uh, real quick, everybody, uh, if you just type in Team Celebrations, I think it's from uh, MLB.com. There's a great gif of G-Man Choi yeah. uh, swinging the sword around. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, first of all, immaculate flex there, my friend, mm. <laughs> on the black belt. Uh, I, for one, made it to red, which hey, was um, for where I was taking my, my Taekwondo lessons, as hey. they called it. Um I was the belt right before black. I don't think I ever made it to black. I was like right there, but I stopped. But the red, red, red was big time. I remember when I got <laughs> that. It was, it was, it was like the coolest thing ever when it happened to me. I was pumped, man. Um, th- those were good times. But uh, yeah, I mean, who doesn't like the sword thing? And people might remember actually from a couple years ago, um, Guillermo Heredia of the Atlanta Braves when he was on this is I think 2021. Uh, he ran out with like these plastic swords, so it wasn't as cool looking like the actual prop as the pirates version, but it was cool. You can look it up and Heredia would just like run onto the field with like these plastic swords. <laughs> it was really, really cool. Uh, I-, I like it. I think it's a great pick. Um, and especially for a team that like you need something to get fans excited about. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? You need to, you need to make them happy. So I, I-, I think it's great, man. That's yeah. good stuff. And sadly, my D backs are not on this list. So I'm kind of inspired because the D backs have the pool at Chase Field. What if we got like some pool noodles as our home run celebration? Ooh. We're doing a little sword fight with pool noodles. I don't know. Hey, go crazy. You know, bring out a rattlesnake. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, bring out a snake. Bring out, what if I had like a flute? It was like put the little, yeah. little snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. actually great. <laughs> like, like so, there's got to be some prop thing that you can make it look like a snake comes out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they got to have something you could play a flute like they have a pot near the dugout. That'd be great. I think you just gave them an idea. You should pitch them that. All right. Um, D-backs, listen up. All right. Number two in the draft, Javi. I am taking the proper number one pick. And oh, it, okay. is wow. it is true. It is true. Every now and then, I don't think it's always true, but every for a, a good portion, I'll give you that, of these drafts, I tend to start off strong. Uh, it's just at the end when I do yeah. like my my bit pick yeah. <laughs> for the bit. Pick. Yeah, the personal pick for the bit. Like when I picked, uh, I forgot who, who I picked, like uh, in the Yank of the yeah, Yankees. Yeah, Sonny from, Gray. It was like yeah, the Sonny Gray, Gray <laughs> best trade it's deadline like, moves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was like the funniest <laughs> trade deadline move. Um or it was most memorable. And I picked gray because he immediately got back after got good after leaving and they could have had Darvish. That's what, that's what I think my reasoning was, but my pick is going to be a team that the Padres recently got beat by twice um, in a two game series. It is a team that they've made a trade with before that unfortunately gave us Austin Nola. It is a team that we have a lot of similarities with. We play them every year. We practice the same places sometimes all those spring training games, etc. I am going with the Seattle Mariners and wow. their, unbelievably glorious trident. Look, a couple weeks ago, rewatched Aquaman with Jason okay. Momoa uh, for, I think, my second time. That is just, it's such a campy, great movie. But I love the cheesiness of it. And this isn't cheesy. It, it is a little bit, but it's just cool. And it's just a damn trident. And I like that you picked the sword, too, because this reminds me of... um. Uh, I think it was a couple years ago. I don't know if they still do it, but the KBO championship was just this giant, like the trophy is just a giant sword. I'm not making this up. Go look it up. It is yeah. the coolest thing ever. It looks like something out of the legend of Zelda that the villain would use. Awesome stuff. And I think these both attest to that. I just, man, I, we need cool trophies. You know what I mean? We need to just go all out there with some of these things. And I just think the Triant's cool. It's gold. You can't miss it. It obviously fits the Mariners. And I just like the idea of seeing Julio hit a home run and get back into a dugout, rocking a trident, looking like he's Aquaman, Jason Momoa, about to rule the seven seas, have yeah. all the animals of the ocean at his command. And they're a team that's on, on fire right now. So clearly it's not a team that's cursed or anything like that, where you're seeing them do these celebrations and you're like, eh, I mean, it's cool, but it'd be better for winning. So shouts to the Mariners. Love the trident. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> the Mariners find ways to be cool a lot, even when they're bad. So. Yeah, I like how on brand it is because as cool as the pirate sword thing is, I don't know. Uh, do pirates have swords? I guess. I guess they have swords. I guess it's yeah. kind of on brand. But the trident really feels mm-hmm. very mariner, very sea based, mm-hmm. very Seattle. And I just overall as a symbol, I just think the trident's cool and it's such a big prop. I love the big props. I think they're just something aesthetically pleasing about it. Um, yeah, and. Percy Jackson, one of my favorite things growing up. Poseidon, Ooh, me too. Poseidon. Exactly. So it's New like series I like coming Poseidon. out too. New series yeah, coming out. Yeah. That'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, and that drop. So Mariners, I'm not I'm not upset that you took that number one. I mean, you just read the MLB.com article and took their number one pick. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, this guy. <laughs> Finding a way to get me. Go ahead. Take your pick. Okay. Yeah, I don't. That was a necessary shot. I'm actually uh, really sorry about that one. But number three in this draft, I think is super fun because I'm a guy born and raised in New Jersey. You're also a guy from New Jersey as well. Big show from New Jersey. Famous on TV. The Sopranos, right? And what is Sopranos mm. about? It's all about that mob life, that mm. gangster life. And one mm-hmm. team that does that with their home run celebration is the Southside Chicago White Sox who put on the mobster jacket, the mobster hat, and they're out there pimping home runs with the Luis Roberts and the Eloy Jimenez's when they're playing games and when they're healthy because that's far and few between. But I'm taking the White Sox and the little mobster outfit that they put on. Back in the day, fun store in fifth grade for Halloween. I dressed up as a pimp and I went to school. My teacher was not very happy at me. She said, do you know what a pimp is? I said, no. She said, it's not a very good thing. I said, "Hmm." (laughs) okay. (laughs) I like the idea of you having that conversation, just visualizing that. You're just looking up and being like, okay, whatever. (laughs) I don't care. I got a cool cane and I got grills in my mouth, lady. I don't care what a pimp is. (laughs) Oh, I would kill to see that fit. Um, yeah, I mean, this was this was a pick that was up there for me. Like you said, Soprano, so, so core to Iconic. New Jersey culture. I mean, it's just so important. Have I personally seen all the series? No, but we'll leave that for another, <laughs> another time. I know, I know. It's you long. Jersey? I know, I know, I know. It's, it's. Wow. I'm more ashamed to have not have seen that yet. And I also haven't seen Breaking Bad yet. Okay. Now, now. The reason I haven't seen Breaking Bad is also because I know all the plot points, or at least the major ones, and that's what's hard for me to get into. But anyway, this isn't a, a movie thing. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> great pick, man. Uh, I think this was going to be one of my next picks. Uh, but thankfully, as usual, you left me something uh, even <laughs> better. Even better. Yeah. With the fourth pick in this draft, <laughs> I got to go Homer a little bit. I got to go Homer oh, a little God. bit. And if we were including other years, I would argue that the swag chain that they rocked in 2021 just mm, you can find there's this guy Dragonfly Jones on Twitter, one of my favorite followers on Twitter. He's amazing. Uh people just go follow. Him. He's just the, the just the just a wise man in a lot of ways. Uh but he's great and he talked about it when Tatis hit that game tying home run against the Astros, you know, in the bottom of the ninth in the regular season, rocking the swag chain afterwards. Coolest thing ever. But we're talking about this year. And I still think the Padres are worth talking about with their Polaroid camera celebration. Now, here's the thing. It's not as fun as the other ones in the moment. The sword. And there, there's there's all sorts of ones that we're going to get into. The trident, the mobster jacket, the from a couple years ago, the home run jacket that the Blue Jays had with all those pins mm-hmm. on it. Right. It's not as cool visually in the moment. Like, yeah, sometimes they make it fun. You'll see, like, I remember Josh Bell when he was on the Padres. He did, like, the, you know, pose, like the Randy pose before Randy did it. Like, it it can be fun sometimes, but mostly I like how unique it is because it gives us something after the game. Padres social media team often tweets out the Polaroid, and it's just kind of cool, and you sometimes get a collection of them. So it's this fun thing where it's like, yeah, on the broadcast, it's not necessarily as cool and fun, but Mm -hmm. I like the adage of something unique, which is like, this is a cool thing to look forward to in social media. And there's been a couple Polaroids that are really fun that you'll just see. They print them out. They get this really nice shot of them, and I just I like that. I think that's a nice, innovative way to go about things, especially considering that they probably got rid of the swag chain because they had one of the biggest collapses in their franchise history. So they wanted to move away from that. And I think they successfully found a way to move away from that. Yeah. I think it's a super cool and unique celebration. I don't think like do Padres players ever get photos taken of them? Like, I don't think it ever happens. Right. Like I think it's pretty rare for athletes to get photos taken of them. So I think Mm -hmm. seeing a celebration where we actually see athletes on camera, just Mm because it's so rare that athletes get photos taken of them ever on a daily basis um especially when they're playing their game i've never seen a photo of tatis before when he's at bat so i'm very grateful when i get the home run celebration photo um Mm -hmm. pick of fernando tatis there so good pick by you javi um of course you went with the bias homer pick and that's okay um i can't pick the d-backs because they are not even mentioned in this article so they will not be drafted by anyone here today unfortunately but we're going to continue our draft of best uh, of drafting the best home run celebrations but before we continue 
Let me first say, don't forget to catch every D-backs and Padres pitch on their hometown broadcast. When you download the series XM app and either search up Diamondbacks or Padres. Do you ever have like a little transition on your YouTube videos? I've seen Bryce Patrick do it. He has like a little like slide transition between sponsors. Ooh, I might need to add no, that. I mean, I, that. I'm thinking of doing that too as like a little thing. But on the YouTube, you know, you have our ads that come in too. So I haven't done that just yet. But uh, I remember I used to, um, I used to when we were audio only back in the day, take some clip of um, this this it's called girlfriend reviews on YouTube. Long story short, it's a really funny YouTube channel. And the girl says like, hold up a minute. And I just put that in the transition. Only OG listeners will understand this joke. This is like 2020 when I did this in the audio. But uh, yeah, I thought about it, but I don't know. I just figured, uh, you know, keep it a little simple. I yeah. Guess. That's, uh, Bryce did on our crossover. I was like, huh, that's clean. That's interesting. All right. <laughs> back into the home run celebration draft. Number five pick overall. Miller Thomas is back on the clock. That's me. And mm -hmm. I'm going with another fun one because we just got the very unique athletes getting photos taken on themselves taken off the mm -hmm. board and next up i'm going to go with a little team out there in michigan they do this really fun celebration where they do mm -hmm. a crossover of sports of course i'm a guy who works in professional hockey i work for the arizona mm -hmm. coyotes so we're in on the hockey train and the detroit tigers do this little thing where they do a little crossover celebration a little ode to the detroit red wings by putting on a little hockey helmet grabbing that hockey stick and pretending that they're smashing that home run with the hockey stick basically a slap shot home run i would like to see that um i wonder how far a, a, like a hockey player could hit a baseball um on the field with like a hockey stick that'll be kind of interesting um mm. but yeah i'm taking the detroit tigers i don't know what that would look like maybe you just have the ball stationary off a tee and maybe the guy swings at it with a hockey stick i don't know if that's plausible i don't know if that's entertaining or not but i'm taking the detroit tigers helmet stick celebration crossover i like the tigers here number five overall it's really cool I, I, and i like that they do not just like uh the the, the um what's it called the stick um, that they also do uh, the helmet too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's a solid pick, man. Uh, wow. th they get the job done there, and I really appreciate it. And I think that um, I, I don't mind the that. sports, and especially because the Red Wings have, frankly, or actually, I don't know for sure, but I, I know they won a cup somewhat recently. Sometime. Maybe. Somewhere in the last 50 years they've done it. Yeah, before. something like that. They <laughs> definitely, they've, they've won one before, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a really good pick, and I think that um, hey, Detroit needs to have something, because their wow. sports oh. world their sports world can be tough. I, I'm talking about sports world. I'm talking about sports world. It could be tough. The Pistons ain't going nowhere. They got shafted in the draft. The I guess the Lions are looking okay, but historically they are awful, right? Like they're like worse yeah. than anybody. And in baseball right now, they're watching my fellow Puerto Rican brethren, Javi Baez, somehow get worse this year and swing at every pitch, uh, even if it's closer to where you and I are currently recording. He will apparently swing at the pitch. So uh, uh, really good pick, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. Um, I Also, this, <laughs> this fun draft idea I had off the top of my head based off what you just said, it's not exactly baseball, uh, baseball related, but drafting the – saddest sports city so you could draft like detroit and all their you know mm. losses and all their sports over the years you could draft another you know city with all their sucking teams over the years i just think that could be kind of fun to play in the cynicism and then you could do the reverse drafting the best sports cities based off you know the historical relevance of those teams in those cities as well so that could be kind of fun but who do you got next number six overall you know i forgot who i was gonna pick Oh, I'm not even going to lie to you. I totally forgot who I was going to pick and I know it was a good one. Mm. So instead I'm going with just, I'm, I'm going off the, going off a little bit off the top because I appreciate the craftsmanship here. Oh, I appreciate the look of it. Um, I think that on, on top of it, just making sense. It's just, it just looks cool. And I appreciate what it looks like. And that's the samurai helmet for okay. the Los Angeles angels. Um, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Come it's on. just come on. everything. When you just just say everyone, I want everyone listening. Just say the word samurai to yourself right now. Okay. Go ahead. I'll give everyone a second. Samurai. Just say it. It sounds like it just sounds awesome. You know what I mean? Like you could be out the womb. You could be in pre-K and you could be like, wow, samurai. Like, what do they do? Like, that's awesome. You know what I mean? So I just think anything involving samurai is just always awesome. Anything that seems somewhat samurai adjacent is awesome. Um, 
and I appreciate it. I think that it's great. And, you know, come on. I mean, especially with Shohei Otani there, um, especially just with w- how much great offense they have, that it's it's kind of cool to have a warrior be your kind of mascot uh, celebration thing, especially. Now, I know that the Angels are a mess, but just usually when they're firing on all Sindler's offense is their strength. It's pretty cool that you get to see this guy crowd with the samurai helmet. Um, I remember when the MLB The Show for uh, heading into last year had the legendary edition of their game, which... Otani was the cover athlete, and then they had this like really cool art. Everyone should look it up if you don't remember of his like samurai form with like the blade with Otani as the cover athlete. Really, really cool stuff. So that is my pick. First pick that I like by Javi Reyes all draft because the samurai hat was like right there. I was like, if I could get the sword and the samurai hat in the same draft, I got me a little fit. I'm going out for Halloween. I'm going to be a ninja or something. So I would have really liked to clean up this draft, bookend it with my samurai hat, but it's okay. I had two options and that was going to be option one. So I'm going to have to go with option two here. Back in high school, my Spanish teacher She always said you have to go fishing for your Spanish word. She had like a very thick like Argentine accent. She'd be like, when you go for your Spanish word, you got to go fishing. You have to look for your words, form them in your head. You got to go fishing. There's one team that goes fishing. Every time they hit a home run, they put the little fishing jacket on. Mm -hmm. I don't think they get a Bass Pro Master hat, but maybe they should. Because this team, when they hit a home run, they get their little fishing pole. They're reeling in some dingers, and they're taking it home for dinner. I'm talking about the Minnesota Twins with their going fishing celebration. I think it's a lot of fun. Maybe you could get, like, a little magnet at the end. We put a little magnet on the baseball and could actually, like, reel it in. Maybe you could do something like that. That could be really uh, something fun for the social team. Maybe you could fish it out on a lure and send it out to fans, and they could grab the baseball off the fishing pole. So many different activations you could do there for the fans and social media. Look at me just bubbling with ideas, but I think that's a really fun. That's how I'm going to end my draft. Gone fishing, Minnesota Twins. It's good stuff, man. It's Thanks. good stuff. I think that the Twins, and it's just the, the like, it's so silly, like, mm-hmm. to see, like, obviously, we, we mentioned, like, the G Man Choi gift with the sword is great. And, you know, they sometimes can be silly with a picture or with a samurai helmet, but, like, it's just, I love how, like, silly it is. I like that it's like, oh, we're casting a little net. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's just so silly, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, that t- I cannot remember a team discussed less than them, by the way. I, <laughs> yeah. I cannot get over this. I'm sorry. I know I've brought it up before. And especially, by the way, that their two most famous players are not why they've been good <laughs> <laughs> with Byron Buxton and Carlos Correa. Like, th- this Twins team is so weird. I, they're going to, like, randomly upset someone in the playoffs, aren't they? That's yeah, what's going to happen. They're going to ruin some team that's actually probably better, but they'll go on a hot streak for three games. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Yeah, Correa yeah. will finally wake up because he's great in the playoffs uh, historically. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great pick, man. One of my favorite picks. Oh, wow. Had so far. Dare yeah, I say. Well, one of the most under-discussed uh, first-place teams we've ever said. And the the Sully, just a good ode to the, the state itself because on the back of the vest, it says land of 10,000 rakes. Of course, Minnesota, the city of 10,000 lake so just a great old great homage to the city there with their celebration javi how are you gonna wrap up our draft here i have once again forgot what my next pick was oh gonna be God. Oh my but God. it's totally okay we're gonna land the plane anyway <laughs> um it's okay because i've had a good draft and i can't mess it up now <laughs> um at least you would think you would think you um think. <laughs> you would think i can't mess this up um i i'm gonna go this is a little bit of a homer pick shocker that that's how i'm gonna um, Another one. This. I'm actually going with the Royals as gladiator helmet thing. The reason why, and this is just as there, there requires I a little why. bit of goalpost moving here, but the reason I like it is because it looks so much like the MF doom mask. Okay. When you look at it from a distance, it looks like he's rocking the, the Victor Von doom look. That's why I, I'm picking that one because it, it elicits that vibe. I know it doesn't have, you know, Victor Von Doom for Marvel Comics, Doctor Doom for people who don't know. He's got the green, like, you know, hood and everything. I understand that. And I understand that, you know, MF Doom is the same way, but he's like an album cover and all that stuff, right? Like, but it just, it reminds me a lot of it. So I'm picking that one. And I, I just got love for both MF Doom and hip hop in general and then Marvel Comics. So just, just got to shout that one out. I think it's a pretty good one. I know the team has been miserable and it's, but this isn't a draft about which team is the best and whatnot. So that's what I'm yeah. going with for my last pick. A little bit of Homer one, but I don't think the worst one that I've done for a bit. No. I've gotten crazy before on here with bits. 
And it makes you a little sad also and nostalgic. I think. Am I? Can you not hear Hold me? Hold on. Let, let me talk for him. Hold on. Or maybe it's me. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> I was like, I think everything's cool over here. Um, yeah. I was going to say, did you do that pick, you know, because of nostalgia, you know, a little reminisce of your old friend, he who should not be named, who is a <sighs> Royals legend? Is that why? A little ode to him? Former Padre? I'm not even going to say his name. You already know who I'm talking about. I'm sure all the listeners on your side know no who way. we're talking about as well. No hey, we know. Uh, no we way. got a little love in his heart. Um, mm -hmm. Wrapping up. Let me see. Uh, how did uh, who was the last team I just picked? I picked the uh, twins. the twins, and then you wrapped it up just now with them. So to recap the draft, I took the Pirates little sword thing. You took the Mariners trident. I took White Sox mobster. You took Padres Polaroids. I took Tigers hockey. You took Angels samurai. I took the Twins little gone fishing, and then we wrapped it up with your pick just now, which was. Oh, the Royals Gladiator, man. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Royals, actually, I couldn't remember either. So I was like, help me out here, buddy. <laughs> Please. All right. I gotcha. And that's going to wrap up this draft and another crossover. Locked on Padres host Javier Reyes. Javi, where can the listeners find you as always? Uh, you can find me at Javapeno, J A V I I P E N O, and then at L O underscore Padres um, if you just want only baseball related stuff. And then, of course, Locked on Padres on YouTube. Um, be killing it there. If the Padres somehow get hot, don't worry. I got you covered. And I'll start tweeting about them even more if they start getting really hot. And hopefully uh, just we get some good vibes to close out the season. And yeah, go check that out and go check out Just Baseball, where I've been writing um, a lot recently. And I've got other movie related stuff. If you're interested in that, I'll tweet about that from, you know, I've reviewed Blue Beetle. I got some stuff for the website Den of Geek coming out. One Piece live action coming out next oh. week. I'm a big for all my anime homies out there. I'm saying that because I know some of my listeners are big um, anime fans as well. So uh, just just keeping the good vibes, even though the Padres have done their best to try and detract and just destroy those vibes. We keep on, man. We keep on. Hey, that's okay. At Creator Times 24 for my personal account or look up Lockdown Dimebacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle, streaming on all podcasting platforms and on YouTube. Hit subscribe to Lockdown Dimebacks, Lockdown Padres on YouTube. And don't forget to catch every D-backs and Padres pitch on their hometown broadcast when you download the Sirius XM map and either search up Diamondbacks or Padres. That's it from us. Until next week.